ministers with A plus excellent for the Lord Jesus Christ. They're just A plus excellence in so many ways, and they just love the Lord, and they have such a humility and a grace and a desire to reach the people, and they are working uh, feverishly to accomplish all that God's called them to do, and they're doing a great work. So we had a chance to be a a part of that. We're privileged that we had a chance to do that. So um, sorry if I'm doubling up on the microphone, but of course I got mine on, so hope I'm not driving you crazy uh, with too much of my voice. Let me read this verse, and then we will pray, and then we'll have a video, and then we'll have some live testimonies, and then we'll have some video testimonies, and back and forth we go. And by the end of it, we should be done, I don't know, around 10, 1030. We'll go home, okay? Here we go. No, we will be done in about an hour or so, but it'll be a a beautiful hour. In Galatians chapter number 1, verse number 10, it says this, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. What a challenging verse that we would put Christ in and who we would serve above anything of ourselves. We would that we could persuade men, not necessarily just please men, but persuade them as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray and get going with our celebration tonight of giving glory to God for a tremendous mission trip to Oaxaca. Thank you, Father. We thank you so very much, most of all, for the minister of ministers, the servant of servants, the Lord Jesus Christ. Reminded often, uh, one of the very first verses I ever memorized, that Christ came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. That is the theme of this evening, that we laid ourselves down and we must continue to do so to serve others. Most of all, serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Tonight is a celebration of what, God, you did in us, you did through us, and truly and completely it is to honor you and, of course, to honor the work that you have planted in Oaxaca with the Hendricksmans and also, too, to honor the men and women that have gone, not that they would receive honor above you, but rather to honor them for the testimony of the Lord that they have to give tonight. Thank you for everyone being here. It's a great time to gather and again to give you glory and to hear the story of your glory. We worship you, we love you, and we do put this evening before you as a sweet savor, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Christine.
They said since I came in late, I get to be first. So here I am. Um, what did Oaxaca, they said, how does it change your life? And it does. Uh, my theory on going on mission trips, if you can pronounce the name of it, you should go. And I learned how to pronounce Oaxaca, so I got to go. It was um, so much fun. I wish I had learned the language so I could have communicated with the kids there and the people there. Uh, my, my biggest disappointment. As you saw the birthday cake, I had a birthday there, and they celebrated royally. One of the little girls took uh, Tammy out and bought me a hummingbird and gave that to me because they happened to know I liked those. And then there was a young man named Eon that also presented me with a gift. And in this gift, there was a little note put in there and a coin. And in the note, it just simply said that the coin was a collectible and one of their heroes was on this coin and he considered us to be heroes because we came so that we could share the gospel with them and save the souls for God. thought that was really kind of cool that they would consider us heroes. Um, we uh, went to do the VBSC there, just like here, right? Except it's a little different there. Uh, over there, Crystal and I are the lunch ladies, but over there, we were not the lunch ladies. Uh, Crystal, as you saw, can play volleyball, basketball. She can do it all. And um, so we were there doing something a little different, but kids are still the same all over the world. People are the same all over the world. Um, I think the thing that really um, changed my life or changed my thoughts was if you really want to see uh, people are the same all over the world, and if you really want to see love in action, you should go with this group on a mission trip because they are walking, talking, love and actions. Um, every one of them, from our pastor to Roger to Steve, um, all nice grown men, but they're out there playing with these kids and, um, and enjoying it, you know? They've got big smiles on their face. They're having a good time. They're, they're really doing great. And our newbies here, they, uh, they jumped right in. You, you have never seen anything like um, the three girls, uh, let's see, Tammy and Crystal and, and Kendra had never been on a mission trip, and they certainly are pros now because they did an excellent job there. And our Brandon, oh, my stars, what a guy. <laughs> His mom and daddy should be extremely proud of him. He is a sweetheart, um, so kind and so patient to the kids, to us old people, to, to everybody. They were just great. And our gin, um, what a doll. I, I'd never been around it that much. But I guess uh, other than, I mean, we went there to serve the people, and they were serving us. They really made us feel welcome, took care of our every need. And um, so Oaxaca was a really great place. It's, it's wonderful. I appreciate very much that these people would allow me to go with them again. Thank you. Well, I'm Crystal that Marty talked about, and uh, this was my first mission trip. And my the question kept coming to my mind is, why am I going? I had no idea. I kind of set it aside, and Marty, being as persuasive as she is, it's hard to tell her no. So um, there I signed up. <laughs> Even when we got to, to Minnesota, we've had to fly up to Minneapolis. And even at that point, I was still at, why am I going? Why am I to be here? And um, once we landed in Iwaka, it's like, oh my gosh, here I am, and I am so excited that I am here. You know, God has a plan. He had a purpose for me to go. If nothing else, it was just to say, you're here, enjoy the people, enjoy the, the opportunity of being able to, to serve him with these little kids. At camp, the children were so excited. We had so much fun. They were just 
beaming from ear to ear with smiles, and it, it really warms your heart to see that. And one thing that really uh, surprised me is that as we were playing games, we took a water break, and uh, every time you'd give them a glass of water, they would say, thank you. Oh, they know English. Not. They know thank you. They know thank you about as well as I knew Banos, which is restrooms. <laughs> so um, that, that one time, the first couple of times that they said thank you to me, I thought, okay, well, I'll engage in a conversation with them. Well, they would look at me like I was from Mars. So it's like, okay, I've learned my lesson. Don't ask him any questions. Just give him a hug and let's go play. <laughs> so um, I, it was a tremendous week. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I think I showed some of the gentlemen that were there that I'm still capable of doing things. <laughs> I was being watched carefully, and I appreciate that. Um, but I think it hit me more when I got home. The, um, the people of Wat Watuko was the little town that we were in. They were so gracious and welcoming. And um, we had a journal that we kept on a daily basis. And my final entry in my journal was from the Monday after we got back. And um, the real teaching for that whole week was, when, was the point that I returned home. And at that point in my journal, I wrote, this was a, um, this was a very condensed version of my week in my Huatuco, uh, Mexico. There was so much more that went on in the feelings that I had that I hadn't written down. The people of Huatuco had very simple lives. A good majority of them lived in little shanties. Their kitchens were outside, and the clothes were always hung on clotheslines. Well, after I started thinking about it, it's like, well, it's not like they have a closet full of clothes or a dresser to put, you know, I have a drawer for, for shirts and, and shorts and things like that. Maybe they hung them up there because that's where they need to store them. The walls were either a fence covered with a a shower curtain or with blocks. Whatever they had, they used it to create their home. Sunday after we returned, when I got up, I walked into my closet trying to figure out what am I gonna wear? Oh my gosh. What if I only had two or three pieces of clothing to wear? We are so spoiled here. And I know that that's what God was showing me, was that you need to learn to appreciate what you have. I started looking around and saw things that had no use in my life, but I still had them in my house. My house or my home was filled with everything. It's a temporary satisfaction. I wanted to empty every drawer that I had and send it down there so that they could enjoy the things that I had. But again, it was a temporary satisfaction. It wouldn't accomplish anything by sending that to them. What would they do with the things? They're a resourceful group of people and they live happily they were always smiling. They, they always had a, a warm heart. And um, they were teaching me, and they didn't even know it. I want to thank the people of Watuko for a special time. My life has changed because of them.
Okay, so this is my first mission trip outside the country. And for me to say that I experienced a lot of first is pretty much an understatement. Um, it's my first time hiking through the jungle. Crystal and I, she's like, we're doing this. I'm like, we're doing it as we're going up and down through the jungle, which is something I would never do here. Um, it's my first time to bucket flush a toilet. I didn't even know what that meant. It had to be explained to me. Um, there's a whole lot of first, but anyway, all those new, ex <laughs> you can relate. <laughs> So all these new experiences really just turned into God revealing uh, more of himself to me. So I'm very thankful that I got the opportunity to go on this missions trip. Um, I have three quick points that I want to share this evening of things that I thought of in the time after I got back and started journaling um, the things that I could remember and what God, how God spoke to me. <clears throat> so the first um, point is fear and faith. The second point is challenges, and the third is action. So in my fear and faith section, let me read Mark 11:24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. God start, started preparing my heart a couple years ago after hearing testimonies from another group from our church that went on a mission trip. I started praying, God, would you want me to go on a mission trip? How do I do that? How do I accomplish it? How do I pay for it? How do I get time off work? All those things that a lot of people would ask. But I knew one thing, God would have to provide a way should I ever go. So each time there was an announcement made at church, there was a missions trip coming up, I'd say, God, is this it? And I never got an answer. However, <laughs> Um, unexpectedly, one Sunday morning after church, Marty asked me if I was going to the meeting about the upcoming missions trip, and I said, well, I hadn't planned on it, but in that brief moment, I felt God nudge me to say yes and to attend, so I did. God put everything into place that allowed me to go. Taking that small leap of faith and trusting God was the start of a great experience and, for me, a lot of learning, not just about missions and serving God in the mission field, but just how the rest of the world is because I never get outside my comfort zone. I thought I should learn what VBSC was all about since we were going to take it to Oaxaca. So I signed up to work our VBSC this year and the theme was Be Brave. It's another step God used to prepare me for the trip. One, I learned how to I don't know if I'm brave, but I learned how to do some things that I wouldn't normally do, and I learned about VBSC and what it's all about and what a great ministry it is for here locally in our community. I suppose like most people who have never been on a missions trip before, one of the main reasons might be fear. Randy had mentioned to us in one of our planning meetings that if you didn't have some fear, then you might not be normal. Well, I had a lot of fears. <laughs> I had a fear of flying. I had a fear of motion sickness. I had a fear of animals and critters. Oftentimes I have a fear of people. I hear, have a fear of saying or doing the wrong thing. A fear of like the food in a different country. Fear of illnesses. What if I get sick or what if someone else gets sick and I won't know what to do. Basically a fear of not being in control of every single one of my decisions. I'm not sure if that's what Randy had in mind when he said fear is normal but I'm glad I met the criteria for having some of the fear. And that even with all these fears, I was able to trust God and he took care of every single one of them. Every one. Every fear I ever had never occurred. That's a miracle for me. <laughs> um, this trip exposed to me that I had a faith problem. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I believe in Christ as my savior but I realized that I wasn't living daily in the blessings of being his child because of my fears. Every single fear I had never occurred. I would not have been able to experience God's grace in this area of my life if I hadn't surrendered his call to go on this trip. My second point is challenges. And you see that picture up there? These little signs are everywhere in Motoko. Well, everywhere in Hotoko. Watoko? I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but Watoko. 
I can't say it, but anyway, in Watoko, there's literally, physically, a lot of ups and downs and bumps. One of the many things that stood out to me all over Watoko are the speed bump signs reminding drivers to slow down. As a passenger in the commuter van, driven by our very capable pilot, Marty, and our very trusty co-pilot, Brownie, we felt every one of those speed bumps. <laughs> so much so that one time my eye watch alerted me to a new physical activity I had undertaken. It detected I was on an elliptical training machine and was congratulating me for doing a new exercise. And all I was doing is riding in the back of the van. Like I say, a lot of ups and downs and bumps. We passed these street signs, and I can't even pronounce what it says. We passed it multiple times a day. Every time I saw the sign, I braced myself for the upcoming bumps in the road. The signs really stood out to me. It was so different than the normal speed bump sign that we see here in America, mostly because of the translation. I quickly looked it up on my phone, and in English, it re translates to reduce which sounds more like an action word to me versus a speed bump like an object in the road. I kept thinking of the word reduce, and then it dawned on me after a few days that to learn and grow on this trip, to understand what God wanted to show me, I needed to reduce me, take the focus off of my needs, my wants, my desires, my desire to control my circumstances. I needed to, needed to focus less on me in order to see more of him. John 3.30 says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Then my final point, action. Joe asked us one day during our devotional time, how many missionaries does our church support and can we name them? Well, like a lot of you, I've read the names on the flyers. I've read the prayer request each month that um, and Randy Adams sends, sends out for the African prayer team. But I have no idea every single missionary name that we support. I didn't even recognize or know who Joe and Amy Hendricksman were before this trip. To me, his point was uh, kind of knocking at my heart to say, hey, take more of an active role in supporting our missionaries, not just in the financial support, but in the prayer support because they struggle and they work very hard. They face unimaginable challenges. And he said they get lonely. That made me sad when he said they get lonely. They're out there every day doing God's work, not for personal glory, but for God's glory because it's what God has called each of them and each of us to do. Joe challenged us to pray for our missionaries and that God would send laborers. In closing, he asked that we pray every day at 938, and he shared this verse with us, Matthew 938. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Thank you. Hello, First Bible Baptist Church in Blue Spring. It is an honor and uh, a privilege to say hi to all of you, even through a video. Um, just to talk to you a little bit about our Oaxaca mission trip this year, it was a truly blessing. Uh, first of all, my heart was just blessed and touched just by seeing Linda and Randy again. Um, they know I love them so much, and I am just grateful for the lives. Of course, uh, to see Brownie and uh, Marty, and I mean, just all the team, Jen, all of them. Uh, it was just like seeing you all in person. And um, also, uh, of course, it is just beautiful to serve the Lord together and just to hold hands and just go to the bottle together knowing that there's people around you that love you and that pray for you and that love the Lord with you. And um, second, it was just beautiful to see the work that Amy and Joe are doing in Oaxaca. And just the hunger that people have, all the Bibles and all the you know printed word that they're sharing with others. I mean, it's just amazing and it just blow minded the way that they uh, share the gospel. And uh, with our VBSC, I was able to be with the little kids. Uh, a lot of people think that I love children. I do, but I do not have the best patience 
for the little ones. And so this year I got to be with the uh, younger kids and the first day it was a, it was a challenging just to, I mean, be with them and just love on them and, you know, it, I was the only one that spoke Spanish in the team and I wanted, uh, I mean, I had a great team, don't take me wrong. I had Linda and I had Marty and uh, they just blessed my life. It's just beautiful seeing these two women that uh, love the Lord and they do whatever you ask them to do and whatever uh, other people ask them and they, they have happy hearts. And But anyways, my heart was a little bit, um, yeah, just working with the little ones, having patience and, you know, trying to get the one while the other one is doing something else and get their attention and all that stuff. But I think at the end of the week, the Lord did the job and I think it was him who uh, did everything and just made everything possible. Just seeing the kids just, you know, memorizing the Bible verses and paying attention to the Bible lesson and coming the next day to tell us what they've learned and what they remember from the day before, especially this little one, Koki. He was, uh, I mean, he touched my heart. He will come every day early before anybody else. He will help us to set up with no shoes on. He will help us to set up everything and he will stay until the end to uh, help us pick up everything. And he, he was probably five years old. Um, mom wasn't at home. Dad wasn't at home. He was just by himself. And it was just, I mean, it was just a heartbreaking, uh, the fact that there's little ones that they're just surviving, but yet he felt the love of the Lord through us and he wanted to come every day uh, to help. And then lastly, I think that one of the things that also made me just feel so honored, it's just, it was seeing the pouring of the roof at the church building. And it, it was something that I've never experienced with any church before. And just a part of it, just by seeing and by praying, it, it, was, it was very humbling. Um, seeing what they've worked for, what everybody that support the missions have worked for, and just seeing that it's there, palpable, that you can see it, you can touch it, you can, you can just be a, be a witness of what the Lord is doing. It, it was really humbling. And uh, I mean, at the end, I think that God could have chose whoever, somebody else, somebody with more talent than me, somebody with a life that is more uh, holy than mine, somebody that has more patience than I do. But the Lord shows me and shows the team that went. And for that, it was just a, a touch to my heart, just saying, Lord, thank you for choosing me to go and to experience and to serve the people in Oaxaca. Uh, with this uh, church, with your church. And um, I just thank the Lord for that. And thank you for taking me as well. Thank you for adopting me as one of you. And I love you, church. I hope that the Lord bless you. I hope that you keep growing on him. And then we send greetings here from Mexico, from Juarez. And the church, we're celebrating our Independence Month. So I'll see you soon, bye-bye. Hello, I'm Jennifer, giving my testimony on Hawaka, Mexico. Um, even though this is a video, it is still hard and still nervous. I'm not good at talking to people. Um, what God showed me, it's different than most missions trips. I've been on a few. Um, it's hard to put into words what God has done in my heart because it's, it's all on the inside, but I don't have the words to explain what and how he changed my heart. Um, someone had said that sometimes God hardens your heart so he can break it. And maybe I said that wrong, but it sounds good to me because my heart was so, so very hard. And I kept praying and praying and praying. And I just felt like all those prayers were bouncing off the walls. Like I knew 
I know God is real and I know he hears me, but it just felt, I was going through a time of silence. Like I just couldn't hear God, couldn't feel God. And my heart was so, so hardened. Um, going to Huaca was a start of God breaking my heart, slowly like tearing it away. I'm not even in person and I'm gonna cry. He broke my heart and I could hear him again. I could see him working. I could feel his presence again. Going on the trip was hard for me because someone I love so much, I thought I was watching that person die right in front of my eyes. And to leave that in God's hands why I'm gone and couldn't be here in a moment's notice was hard. Before the trip, at a park, I watched someone just drop dead to the ground and being there to assist in CPR, trying to revive her and bring that life back into her. You know, it's just, God was showing me how precious life is and how quickly it could be taken away and how we're here to tell people about God's word and to share the good news because you never know. You never know when life is going to take you and God's going to take you home. So he was showing me different things before this trip and it was hard to come to give up control. But the thing that I learned is that when God calls you to go, you need to be obedient. And when you're obedient, he takes care of you and he takes care of the ones that you love. Maybe not in the way that you expect, but he takes care of them and he's, and he's got it under control. And that part of going to Huwaka and being in that environment and in their community, you know, was a part of breaking my heart and got me ready for youth camp at church and completely broken and softened for those kids because God showed me that I do love kids and that I'm good with teenagers and I was questioning my belonging in the youth. I was questioning if I was actually supposed to work with kids and just seeing those kids and working with them in Hawaka, Mexico and the BBSC was God's way of revealing to me that he does have a purpose for my life and that I am following his purpose and that he is in control and he is there even when you can't feel him or hear him or your heart's so hard and you're just begging for it just to crumble and break because you want you want to feel his presence and how sweet it was when he broke my heart for him and just how much closer and how much more understanding that I have of who he is and what he's been teaching me. So that is all I have. That is my testimony of how God worked in my life personally on Hawaka, Mexico trip. The greatest thing about the Oaxaca mission trip, which actually applies to every mission trip, which actually applies to everything that goes on in this church, is miracles. Miracles happen on every mission trip, and we've heard some of those tonight, because it's guaranteed when you take the supernatural truth of God's word and you present it with a proper heart the people see that it's real it's a promise that miracles would happen Isaiah 51 11 says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return into me void, but shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sin it. When we give out the word of God, the truth, 
there's fruit, miracles. It accomplishes what God wants to happen. And it prospers because it's his will. God uses these miracles to reveal himself. To bear witness of him, it displays God's power in the people's lives and in our lives. We were able to see miracles in the children. We were able to be a part of seeing miracles in the mothers, in the fathers, in the grandparents, in the families while, while we were there. Miracles also happen, as we've heard tonight, to those who made themselves available, who made themselves willing to serve, because it's very clear that God will honor when you are obedient and you're faithful and you're willing to serve. He will honor that. Sharing God's word, which is what every mission trip is about, and what we do here at First Bible Baptist Church, standing on the word of God, will always accomplish miracles. Going to Oaxaca was, was hard. It's hot. It was very hot. But I never heard anybody that when we got there and when we were doing what we were doing said, it's too hot for me to do this. I cannot do this. I have to, go, I have to find shade. I can't have to sit down. Crystal, she was a champion. She was, she was my inspiration through the whole thing. Uh, she has. She's no. She won't quit. She just will not quit. Um, the group that we had, Crystal and myself and Jennifer, were seven, seven eight, and nine. A few nine-year-olds. Probably half of seven, eight, and nine-year-olds are street kids. It's one thing to be a street kid as a teenager when you can get by, maybe, but when you're seven, eight, nine years old and you're a street kid. Maybe you had a place, the same place to sleep every night. Maybe you had somebody that gave you food, same place every day, something like that. But they didn't have a family. They were street kids. These kids came in dirty shirts and shorts the first day we got there. And they were a joy. They, they, <laughs> laughter here, laughter there of a kid touches my heart. It's always the same. It doesn't matter where you are, the laughter is the same. You don't have to speak the language. The laughter is the same. But these kids wore these dirty clothes on Monday. And they went home on Friday wearing the same dirty clothes. And that, that hurt my heart. That really hurt my heart. It was, I was so thankful, so thankful to, of the laughter that I heard from the kids. Joe and Amy were incredible. You know, we didn't get to see much of Amy because most of the time we were there, she was sick and she couldn't get out. She couldn't even hardly get her head off the pillow. But we saw Joe every day and it was a pleasure to be around that man. And as Kendra was saying, we need to think about these people. We need to pray for these people, these missionaries. It's not easy. It's, I, one of the greatest parts of going on a mission trip is stepping back on the USA soil. You're glad you went, but you're glad you're home. It's, and, and they're gone for years. And they, they may come home once a year for a little bit, but they're there all the time. Kinder brought up something about what Joe said. I think it was our last morning. And he was talking about the missionaries. Do you know your missionaries? Do you, how many missionaries do you support? Do you know their names? Like Tinder, that hit me right square between the eyes because I could only name a couple of three, and those are the ones I've been to see. We've got, we do this fall conference. We're doing it again this year. 
On the back of, I don't know if it'll be on the back of this one. This is 2020, every time. On, the, on 2020, there's a list of the missionaries. Put that by your nightstand and pick one out every night and pray for them. Work right down and learn their names, learn who they are. I'm working at that now, trying to, re trying to remember who they are. Because what he said was extremely was extremely challenging to me because of the way he said it and he was he was not kind with that remark he was emphatic with that he he slammed us right mark he just i mean he slammed us because none of us could none of us knew exactly how many and we couldn't name them all every morning we had a devotional and when I was, when I was working on mine, I got to thinking about what I might say and what I might do. And I, I realized that every one of us that were there had an assignment. We had an assignment to be there. We had an assignment every day to get ready for the kids. We had an assignment when it was over. We had an assignment. So I'm going to think about assignments. So I went through the Old Testament and I picked out a couple of three or four people like us, that God gave assignments to. He gave assignments to Noah. He gave assignments to Moses. He gave assignments to Gideon. And he gave assignments to what I think, see, he's kind of a piece of work, Jonah. <laughs> he was a tough nut, but God took care of that. Anyway, these guys were given these assignments, and it was mentioned one time, do this. And these were against insurmountable odds but they did what God asked them to do, and he took care. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, I have found six, and I'm sure there's more. Matthew 28, 19. Mark 16, 15. Luke 24, 47. John 15, 16. 2 Timothy 2, 2. We are told... And one more, and it's on the wall at the back of this building. Acts 1.8. We are told at least six times in the New Testament to do this, to teach others, to preach to others, to bring fr to bear, bear fruit from, the, from what, you, what you can say. And how many of us do it? I mean, you know, and the world is round. It's, you don't have to, it's not, it's round. We have need for missions right here just like they did in Mexico. Mark's vision several years ago to do vacation Bible sports camp was incredible. I have done every one of them. I'm not special. There's a whole lot of people here that have done every one of them too. But there's a lot of people that haven't done even one of them. And it's a joy. You will never, you will never forget the joy you have of doing this with the kids, of the laughter of these kids. And maybe that'll lead you into a mission trip in another country. But don't forget your missionaries and don't forget these young kids in the world that don't have what we have. They don't even come close, but they have laughter. So this was my second mission trip I got to go on. Uh, my first one was back in 19. We went to Bogota, Colombia and took Happy Five there. Um, so this one was, of course, VBSC. So very sports um, oriented. I'm a big sports guy. I was like, hey, I'll go do it. Um, I got to room with Brownie. It was pretty awesome. Uh, we would wake up in the morning. You know, we'd be talking about strategies for the day, stuff we can improve on. Come back to the room, very tired, you know, nine at night. And we're still talking about it up till, you know, 10, 11 at night. Um, we had a pretty cold room while we were there. Um, the room could go down to about 62 degrees, so we set it there. And then <laughs> it was the first night we were there. I woke up, it was about midnight, and the room was down to like 56 degrees. And I roll over, and Brownie's over there, <laughs> and he's putting on a hoodie and sweatpants. <laughs> I was like, dude, do you want me to turn on the, or do you want me to turn the heat up? You know, turn it up. And he's like, no, no, you're good. He goes, this is nothing compared to what it was like in New Hampshire. He's like, I'm like slipping on the streets in New Hampshire. I'm back home, baby. I was like, all right. Um, but no, it was awesome. I mean, it was a big life-changing experience. Um, just to see all these kids, you know, 
a couple of weeks before we went there, they had a natural disaster. Um, so they were recovering from that. They had the National Guard there, military police. Um, and just to see, like, even though this had just happened, these people already don't have, I mean, hardly anything. And then on top of that, they have a big disaster that happened. And just to see, like, how happy these people were, um, how involved they were in each other's lives and neighbors they may have grown up with, neighbors maybe they don't even know, but they were there helping each other and building each other up. Um, and it was just really encouraging to see that because, you know, back here in the States, we're comfortable. And I find myself oftentimes, you know, there's these little things I'm like, oh, I'm gonna complain about it or that, you know, ruins my day. Whereas these people, they may have lost everything, but they still have each other and that's enough for them. Um, and then these kids, I mean, to my knowledge, we didn't have any flyers that went out, you know, from the church saying, hey, on this day, you know, come here to this community center, community center and we'll have a VBSC there. All we had was the worship pastor brought a speaker and a microphone. And while we're setting up, he's calling out to the community, you know, hey, come here, you know, you're welcome here. We're gonna have food, we're gonna have games, you're gonna learn the Bible. And just to see all these kids, I mean, you have them coming down from the streets, you have them coming down from the hills, you have a few climbing up the hill, <laughs> the side of the cliff coming up, just to see them coming from everywhere and just how much they wanted to learn about Jesus. And we had people in our groups that, you know, while the lesson's going on that were talking, we had kids stepping up telling these other kids, you know, hey, be quiet, you know, listen to them. We're trying to learn something here that's going to be, you know, bring so much joy to us. And just to see them, you know, step up when we are hardly speaking any of their language, you know, and they understand there's that barrier there, so they wanted to step up and fill in those gaps. And it was just awesome to see. Um, I had the honor of, you know, doing the basketball um, set for the week, and... Well, it was supposed to be basketball on paper. It turned into a full-on rugby match every day. Um, I think our highest scoring game was like 4-0. Um, but, I mean, these kids, you know, soccer is predominantly their sport. But just to see how eager they were to learn these other sports. And we had basketball, we had volleyball. Um, just, it was just awesome just to see their heart and just how much joy it brought to them that, you know, hey, a lot of them are on the streets. Their parents are working at home. They're by themselves. You know, we have these foreigners coming in who actually care about us. You know, what do they have to offer that, you know, we don't have here? And just to be able to give our hearts and just to show them, you know, hey, this is why we're here. It's because of Jesus and because of you guys, and it's our calling to spread the gospel to the most parts of the earth. You know, here in Blue Springs, in the country, anywhere we go, that's our mission. And just to see them, you know, understand that and then really take that on and then get plugged in with, you know, the VBSC, and then even when we're out in the streets, when we went to the high school, or went to the school out there, we saw a lot of these kids there. And just to see them, you know, run up to us and want to talk to us and take pictures with us, it was just awesome. And then the last day, all the parents, you know, every day we had parents there, but each day the parents grew more and more. And that last day we did a big, um, like, worship service, and we had all the parents in the back, and just to see all of them plugged in and singing with us, or they didn't know the words, you know, they weren't talking to each other or on their phones or anything like that. They were listening to the kids and watching them. And then just, yeah, it was awesome. Um, if you haven't been on a missions trip, go on one. Um, it's, it's life-changing. I mean, on the trip, towards the end of it, I was ready to go home. I was exhausted from all the work we were doing. Got home, I woke up the next day, and I was missing it already. I wanted to go back. And it's just, it's awesome to see what God will do in your lives if you go. Good evening, First Bible, although it is good morning from where we're at here in Munich, Germany. Um, we're sorry we can't be with you tonight uh, for the for the share night, but we did want to share uh, just a quick message of what God did with us on the trip to Oaxaca. So, Linda, go ahead. So, when the um, plans started being made for the mission trips last year, we were told we could either go to Oaxaca or Mexico City. And when we heard the descriptions of the two trips, in my mind, I was thinking Mexico City. But the more I prayed about it, the more I realized it was Oaxaca, which for those of you who know me know I'm not athletic and it didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, one of the things that we were supposed to do before we left was to read through Galatians. And as a team, we read through it together so that we could um, come together as a team. We would get together on Sundays after church and we would go through what we had read but Randy also asked for us to 
journal journal our thoughts before we got there and what when we were there I did really good with my thoughts before we got there but I didn't write down while we were there and since it's been three months since we were in Oaxaca um, there's a lot of things that I can remember from the trip but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to share today one of the things that would make sense for me to share is that while we were there I did get to lead an older lady to the Lord um, and I know that when when we left that day that she really understood what she was doing because she said to me I'll see you in heaven someday because probably we'll never see each other again here on this side of heaven but we will see each other again in heaven um, but I think that since it has been three months since we've been there one of the things that I can take away from that trip now is even though we could not speak their language and there were very few interpreters for us on that trip there is a universal language and that's our body language and we can share the love of Jesus through our face through our eyes by the smile on our face and those children could tell even though we couldn't speak to them when I say no espanol they'd look at me like I was crazy like no espanol why are you here if you can't speak my language but they could tell that we loved them just by smiling at them and by being there with them um, and even just the people on the streets you know you give a grin and you get a grin back not just in Oaxaca in our states too even here in Germany but I think the other thing that I have learned since then just by seeing um, Joe and Amy in action through Facebook and seeing them in action in person and um, that small group in their church there's a lot of work that needs to be done and they need help and if you can't physically go they really need us to be praying and as a church that's what we've committed to is praying for the missionaries that we support and I think even we can take that a step further and in our prayers pray for missionaries around the world even those that we don't know and we can't name by name because there's a lot there's a lot going on in this world and I know right now um, another hurricane has come through Oaxaca and those people's villages have been um, destroyed and the things that we can just go to the store and get even in this time of um, production shortages um, we can still find a tube of toothpaste or we can still find a bar of soap it may not be what you're used to using but we can still find it and I think we tend to be a little ungrateful here um, so I think that that's one of the things that those are some of the things that God has shown me is there's still a great need more than ever for us to be out there helping our missionaries um, through prayer through going physically taking advantage of the trips that our church offers us to go on um, as well as um, just praying um, which you know, I know a lot of us say, all I can do is pray. And the other thing I think I've learned over the last few months is that's the best we can do is to pray. So that's all I have. Well, for me, um, trips are always a little bit different. And um, this trip was a little bit different. We had done something similar uh, in um, Juarez, thank you, uh, back in 2015-16. And uh, so to do the sports end of it, was just always it's always a little bit different to me but for me a lot of it is um not just the 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 things that i get while i'm there the people's lives that we change but a lot of it that, that we're able to help change through the gospel but a lot of it is for me um seeing the the people on uh the the team because um they are really you know it's my responsibility to get them trained and ready to go and it, it was a good team. I mean, it was a, a seasoned team. We'll put it that way, okay? Um, and so I was a little bit worried going in uh, because of the uh, the seasoned team that was going. Um, I like that word, seasoned. He's okay. being kind. We were all old. <laughs> but, except um, Brandon. Except for Brandon, yeah. So, uh, and Paloma. So, um, that, you know, I was a little bit worried going in, but really the team just stepped up and did just an incredible job. And to see 
everyone work together for me that was just a win and you know the other thing is is I seldom uh, get to take a trip with and and work with my pastor uh, in fact in all the years this was only the second time uh, that Mark and I, Mark and I had gotten to travel together and so for me that was that was a great time uh, to spend with Mark he and I were on the same team and so we had to spend a lot of time together and so for me that was a that was very special and it was, it was a little bit different than than normal for me so and then one other thing I mean as I'm here in Germany yesterday I took a trip to uh, the and I'll have a hard time pronouncing it but Dracow. the the Datuch um, Dracow. Dracow. it's Dracow okay that that <laughs> where she's saying okay um, concentration camp uh, it's here near Munich and um, as I was walking through that, it was just, it was very sobering um, to see, uh, you know, just the evilness of, of obviously Adolf Hitler and then the men that were under him and just the evilness that, um, that they had in their, in their hearts and in their lives. And it, it made me think about uh, the, this trip and any trip that we take and how important it is. And the verse that came to my mind um, was Isaiah uh, chapter 52 verse 7 and this is this is really for the whole team it says how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publisheth peace that bringeth good tidings of good that publisheth salvation that saith unto Zion thy God reigneth and you know that's the job anytime we go on a trip whether it's using soccer balls um, basketballs like we did in Oaxaca or we just got back from Mexico City a month or so ago, and that was actually taking physically the Word of God and sharing it. Doesn't matter, it's all with the same purpose. And he says, Beautiful are the feet. So, team sitting there today, you all have beautiful feet, and I love each and every one of you. I'm so um, honored to have gotten to serve with you there in Oaxaca City. You guys, have a great night sharing. Um, and uh, we love you all, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Hey, and I loved working with all of you, too. Jennifer Castilla, I did not forget you. You were one of the young ones, too. <laughs> love you guys. Bye-bye. Hey, good evening, First Bible in Blue Springs. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. Just wanted to give you a, an update real quick um, on our Bible study. You all helped uh, put the roof on the building here. Uh, and you got to see that happen while you guys were down on your trip. And so we've been holding Bible studies on Tuesdays, and uh, I don't want to get too close because everybody's in there. And so here come a few more people this evening. Buenas tardes, Dios le bendiga. And so just want to give you this update uh, as well, and uh, we will have another video for you here uh, as well. So. Uh, again, we thank you guys for coming and your part in the ministry here. God bless you. We love you guys. Hey, good evening, First Bible in Blue Springs, Pastor Mark. Uh, I know Randy's over in Germany with his wife. Uh, we just want to make a short video and tell you thank you for uh, coming to Oaxaca to work in the ministry here. It was truly a blessing to us. Uh, we really enjoyed the fellowship. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have people from the States come and we can just talk and fellowship in the Lord, and we really enjoyed that. Uh, we also want to thank you for uh, the goodies that were brought, uh, and thank you for uh, giving of yourselves for a week to uh, minister to people that you may never see again. And the sports camp was just such a, uh, an incredible tool, an outreach tool. Uh, only eternity will show how many were saved uh, that week. Uh, we drive through that community today, and kids wave at us, and uh, ask us when we're going to do it again. And so I committed for next year, so you guys have to come. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but it just really has opened doors for us. And so we've started Bible studies on Tuesday nights in the building, and I believe there's a short video about that. We had a Bible study last night, had 11 people come from the community, which is a, a tremendous blessing. Um, of course, you all were there when we poured the roof. Uh, in the weeks after you left, we got the floor in. Uh, and so God's just opening doors there, and we're able to minister and see people uh, growing. Um, and uh, we talked last night about uh, tithing and uh, missions offerings, so we'll be introducing that to them soon. Um, and just really 
developing a church. And so we just want to say thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for the sports equipment that you left. We've used that several times since then, and we'll be planning some soccer outreaches uh, over the next few months. And so just a huge blessing. And so we just want to say thank you for giving of yourselves, of your time, uh, of your finances to come here to Oaxaca uh, and minister alongside of us. And so we thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. And we love you guys. Way to go, Joe. Okay, here we go. Short and sweet and to the point. A favorite verse of mine and for our church as the fall season comes upon us, we're thankful. We give praise to God for so much. And of course, this is a testimony night testifying of the Lord and what he has done. Psalm 40, verse 5, and many of you have shared verses and, and everything that has been said tonight has answered the prayer uh, of my heart and all of us that we would give glory and honor to the Lord and all of you have. You've done a tremendous job. The videos were great and uh, thank you. Thank you, God. It says in verse 5 of Psalm 40, Many, O Lord, my God, are thy works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts, which are to usward, this part really just overwhelms me. This is referring to, of course, his wonderful works and thy thoughts to us, word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. When you stand up here for three, four, five minutes, some of you took much longer than that, by the way. But I usually set that example, so praise the Lord. Good discipleship. It's just impossible to tell everything that God has done and what God did. But we declare and we remember and we celebrate. So two simple things, and I'll pray and be done. We met many beautiful people, many amazing people, and those that came alongside of us. I'll mention a young lady by the name of Peely. Oh, is there anyone like Peely? Would love for Jesus Christ to teach the Bible to children while me as a grumpy old man want to strangle them for not paying attention. And I don't mean that in a bad way, just... Listen, she handled them with such grace. I learned so much. God allowed me to meet a precious servant named Peely who was relentless in her pursuit of pleasing God, giving the gospel, and teaching children. I met then two wonderful people that I've mentioned before when we came back by the name of Francesca and Eduardo, brother and sister, who... Days after we left, had their stepfather found at home, murdered, do not know for what reason. Those two ministered along the side of us, translating, being there to give their hearts. They were 15 and 14, I believe, in their age. Am I correct? 14, very young. And they just served relentlessly for the Lord, just as Peely in the different assignment they had. God allowed me to meet some beautiful people and to see children come to Jesus and raise their hand, to hear that there were adults that came to Jesus, and all of you being the servants and the vessels that God used. What a beautiful place in that. God met me as I met others, and God put that together. Then the other part, is how God just met with me when it came to watching this man, Joe Hendricksman, and I've mentioned it once or twice. God just, uh, one day, first or second day, I watched him for a few moments, and I went, wow. I'd like to be like that man because he's like Jesus Christ. And so declaring and remembering to celebrate everything that God did, God truly allowed us to meet some incredible people, and then God met with each one of us, and God met with me in that instant, in that moment of time, for just a few moments to see that this man 
really loves Jesus Christ and really loves the work of God and really loves his wife and really loves all that comes into the mission work. And truly, you can learn and grow from that to say, I will follow him as he follows Christ. All of you, you bless me beyond measure. I couldn't be more blessed to pastor a church that gives their lives and gives their hearts to the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everyone, for representing Jesus in this church with beauty and truth and grace and love. Thank you, Father, for a great night and celebrating everything that you are and everything that you are have done. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith and the reason why and the purpose why. Thank you for Randy and Linda and this whole team of how they poured their lives into others because they love you so very much. And I know they do. It was evident in all that they did. Thank you for the testimonies tonight. They have truly, truly moved me and stirred in me and shown me the evidence of life in each person's life that spoke this evening. We love you. We thank you. And we give you the glory. Dismiss us with your blessing. May we be thrilled and excited to follow you tomorrow. You give us the day to be the missionaries you've called us to be in the area and town that we're in right now. And thank you for all that you did in Oaxaca. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being part of our night. Have a great and blessed night.